Over 680,000 Samsung phones are sold every single day. From flashy foldables to budget-friendly Galaxy A models, Samsung is everywhere. And behind all those phones is a factory system so advanced, it runs like a machine building machines. And we will cover all that here at The Process World. The Origins of Samsung Samsung didn't start out with smartphones or semiconductors. In 1938, it was just a trading company in Korea, dealing in dried fish, noodles, and groceries. The founder, Lee Byung-chol, probably never thought his small business would become one of the biggest tech giants in the world. Things started shifting in the late 1960s when Samsung entered the electronics industry. First came black and white TVs, then microwaves and washing machines. By the 1980s, they were already producing computers and building out factories to make semiconductors and memory chips. The mobile era started picking up in the early 90s. Samsung released its first mobile phone, the SH100, in 1988, just ahead of the Seoul Olympics. It wasn't a hit globally, but it marked the start of something much bigger. In 2009, the game changed with the launch of the first Galaxy smartphone running Android. It had a 3.2-inch AMOLED screen, a 5-megapixel camera, and introduced Samsung into the smartphone space in a big way. Then came the Galaxy S series in 2010. That's where the momentum really kicked in. The Galaxy S2 and S3 broke sales records. Year after year, Samsung kept upgrading their tech, better displays, faster chips, waterproof designs, and built a reputation for delivering powerful and reliable smartphones on a massive scale. By the mid-2010s, they were going head-to-head -head with Apple in nearly every major market. Now, Samsung is producing over 200 million smartphones a year, but how do they do it? Let's take you inside their factories. But before we get into that, please leave a like and subscribe for more amazing videos like this one. Thank you. Now, before a single phone gets assembled, Samsung's global supply chain is already in motion. It starts with design teams finalizing every detail from the shape of the camera bump to the type of glass used on the front panel. Once those designs are locked in, Samsung begins sourcing all the key components needed to make the phone a reality. The displays are usually made in-house by Samsung Display. These are the bright, high-resolution AMOLED screens that have become one of the company's signature features. The processors, like the Exynos chips, are manufactured in Samsung's advanced semiconductor foundries using cutting-edge nanometer tech. For markets that use Qualcomm chips, those are supplied externally and arrive at the factory ready for assembly. Batteries, camera modules, and sensors are brought in from a mix of internal departments and trusted suppliers. Everything is timed to arrive at the production plants just when it's needed. The coordination is precise. No warehouse is overflowing with extra parts and nothing is late. This just-in-time approach keeps the production line running smoothly and avoids unnecessary storage costs. Before any part reaches the main assembly line, it goes through incoming quality checks. Technicians inspect the components, test random samples, and confirm that every batch meets Samsung's standards. If something's off, it doesn't move forward. That quality gate is strict, and it's one of the reasons Samsung phones maintain consistency across millions of units. Once all the parts are ready and approved, the real work begins. Inside Samsung's massive factories in places like Vietnam and India, Things move fast, really fast. These facilities are highly automated, running thousands of units down the line every single day. The process kicks off with the most important piece, the phone's brain. Technicians load up surface mount machines with reels of tiny components, resistors, memory chips, processors. These machines place parts onto the phone's circuit board, one by one, at extreme speed. Then, the boards go into a reflow oven that heats them just enough to melt the solder and lock everything in place. It's precise, timed down to milliseconds. After that, the phone starts to take shape. The AMOLED display is carefully aligned and attached to the body. A robot lowers it into place using suction and guided sensors to ensure perfect positioning. Batteries are installed next, followed by the camera modules, which require fine-tuned alignment for them to function properly. 
Next, the phone gets sealed up. The front and back casings are fitted together with strong adhesives or ultrasonic welding, depending on the model. Waterproof models get extra attention here with rubber gaskets or seals added around key areas like the SIM tray and charging port. Once sealed, each phone powers on for the first time. It goes through a basic software boot and initial checks. Machines test the screen responsiveness, speaker output, fingerprint scanner, and camera lenses. All of this happens in a few seconds. No wasted time. Once the phone is fully assembled, Samsung puts it through a serious lineup of tests. This part of the process is all about making sure every phone works perfectly before it's allowed to move on. And we're not talking about just one or two checks. Each device goes through multiple stations, each designed to catch anything that's even slightly off. The first stop is software and function testing. Phones are powered on again and run through a system that checks whether the processor, RAM, and storage are working properly. The display is tested for brightness, dead pixels, and color accuracy. Cameras are activated to test autofocus, lens alignment, and image quality. Even the fingerprint scanner is checked to make sure it responds the way it should. Next up is durability testing. Random samples from every production batch are pulled aside for drop tests, bin tests, and vibration simulations. Some phones are dropped from different angles onto hard surfaces to see how they hold up. Others are put through machines that twist and flex them repeatedly to make sure the structure stays intact. Waterproof models go through a sealed chamber test to verify their IP rating. They're exposed to water sprays, moisture, and pressure to make sure no liquid gets inside. Even the charging ports are tested after these wet conditions to confirm nothing was damaged. Then comes the connectivity testing. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, NFC, and cellular antennas are all activated to check if they can send and receive signals properly. Some phones are placed in shielded environments to verify that signal strength meets Samsung standards. Finally, a few units from each batch are handed over to human inspectors for a last visual check. They're examined for scratches, gaps in the casing, or anything that might have slipped through earlier. If even one thing is off, the unit is pulled for rework or scrapped entirely. Every Galaxy phone you've ever held has passed through this entire process. It's how Samsung avoids mass defects and keeps the experience consistent from one user to the next. Once the phones pass all the tests, they're sent to the packaging area. This part of the factory is clean, quiet, and incredibly organized. Workers and machines work side by side to make sure every phone is boxed safely, cleanly, and ready for shipping. First, each phone gets a final wipe down to remove dust or fingerprints from the screen and frame. Then it's placed into a recyclable paper tray that holds the device securely in place. Samsung has moved away from plastic packaging in most of its phones and now uses paper-based materials, soy-based ink, and fiber wraps instead of plastic films. Inside the box, you'll usually find the phone, a USB-C charging cable, and some paperwork. Depending on the region, there might be a SIM ejector tool or even a charger, although many newer models ship without one. The layout is tight and minimal, designed to reduce waste and cut down on shipping volume. Each box is sealed with tamper-evident tape and labeled with the model number, serial number, and regional information. Boxes are then stacked into cartons in exact numbers, usually 20 to 50 units per batch, and organized based on destination. These cartons are then palletized and prepared for global shipment. Samsung has made packaging part of its sustainability mission. Their Galaxy for the Planet initiative is focused on reducing packaging waste, cutting down on plastic, and making the whole process more eco-friendly. In fact, recent Galaxy S and A-series phones now come in packaging made almost entirely from recycled paper. Once sealed, that box is ready to move across the world, to a store shelf, a courier's van, or straight to someone's doorstep. So now that you know how every Samsung phone is built from scratch, right down to the screws, chips, and recycled packaging, would you ever want to visit one of these factories and see the process up close? Or even better, what part of the phone would you love to redesign yourself if you had the chance? Let us know in the comments as you like the video and subscribe for more like this.